so this is the beginning for the first time for me in this life and as we listen to god's word and understand his truths jesus said his truths sets us free we all have different issues in life is that right and we need answers for them and might be some of those issues are stuck to us like a chewing gum for years and how much we try to get rid of it it sticks even more praise god mm -hmm. so today the lord wants to teach us how we can through his power and grace transform our life amen amen so before we go there there is going to be questions <coughs> and those questions are not meant to judge you condemn you but to learn better is that okay yeah for example how many of you believe your future is in god's hand all of us but that's where we go wrong <laughs> i told you the truth will set you free now if my future is in god's hand that means god is responsible for every thing that is happening in my life if god was responsible then God is responsible by which Adam's life got messed up in the garden of Eden. Is it so? God created Adam. He gave him everything good. He even gave him a wife. And he told him, I do not want you to eat of this one tree which is mine. Mm -hmm. The whole garden is yours. And that's love. He gave it to Adam and said, "Just as I rule over the heavens, you shall have dominion over all things, and I will not interfere in your affairs. Just as I rule over the heavens, you shall rule over this earth, and I will give you the authority. I will give you the power." Now, was Adam enjoying the power? Yes. But when Satan came into the garden of Eden, did he give Eve some information? Yes. Did he give Eve some knowledge? Yes. The knowledge and information that he spoke to Eve was it aligning God's word or opposite to God's word? God said, "If you eat this fruit, you will surely die." Satan said, "If you eat this fruit, you will surely not die. In fact, you will become like God." So the information given was contradicting to God's word, and it looked like the knowledge was. beautiful and that's why eve believed the knowledge that satan gave ate the fruit and gave it to her husband now the husband had a choice what choice did he take did he know what god said yes did he hear what his wife said yes whose word did he accept Even today, husbands we accept. <laughs> okay, so wives' words. Now, were those words against God's word? Yes. So the moment he believed in a, a knowledge that contradicted God's word and moved into action, what happened? First thing, he lost his connection with God. it brought death into his life sickness and disease and sorrow and grief and it destroyed his future is that right yes. so adam's future was in whose hand his own hand your future is in whose hand because every day you too receive knowledge do you receive knowledge from the bible or do you receive knowledge from the news channel right 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 We receive no, from both. We receive from both. But where do we spend more time? Our receiver is receiving which knowledge more? From the world, from the news, <laughs> from the news channel, yeah. from the media, yeah. from the Social newspaper, media, yeah. from the magazine, from the chat show, talk show. Now all those things that we hear, <laughs> are they aligning with God's word? Yes. No. Yeah. Most of them, yeah. no. and if you believe those words and you act on those words which are contradicting to god's word 
do you think things will go well with you? So what's the battle every day? The battle every day is Satan trying his best to, to, to get his knowledge inside of you. And God also sending his prophets, sending his people, using the Bible study and all that to help people to change their thinking, receive the knowledge of God and live by that word so that his power is manifested. If there's a, if when you put the news channel, what news you get? Good news or bad news? <laughs> when you open the newspaper, what news you get? Good news or bad news? But still you want to hear? And how many times do they play the video? Of the bad news. Over and over again. Why? So that it gets deep down inside of you. And from that comes fear. Satan can operate in a person's life when he has been, he has been given an opportunity to input fear in people. Praise God. Amen. So today we are going to see the creative power of God's word. Okay? And we are not only going to study the theory, we will have practicals as well. So you will see that this creative power, which is the word of God, has been given to us and we will see how to use this word practically in our life and when you use it and activate it, the next moment you find sickness and disease are killed instantly. Those from India, have you seen earthworm? Yes. Where there are earthworms? Yes. yes. When the rain comes, yes. do they come out? Yes. Here also? Yes. Okay. When you take that earthworm and put a little salt, what happens? It doesn't only die. <laughs> Wherever it is put, that portion starts melting, it cuts the body and the earthworm is suffering. Mm -hmm. In the same way, whatever situation you are going through and you put the salt called the word of God in that situation, that situation starts getting destroyed and you get victory. Praise God. So the first thing we will study today is what is the trap of Satan? Because Satan cannot attack us without a trap. He has got his tragic, uh, strategies. He has got his deceiving plans. Okay. The first one that he uses is in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 2. Can you open the Bible? Isn't this wonderful? None of us are with the Bible. <laughs> but we always say it is the knowledge of God that I receive every day. That doesn't matter, but today you will understand the power in the word of God. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 2. Thou art snared with the words of your mouth. With the words of your mouth. You can also read. You are taken with the words of your mouth. So, thou art snared, means thou art trapped by the words of your mouth. Now, what is the meaning of the word snare? The word snare is a trap. But the person who is getting involved in that trap doesn't know it is a trap. The person is ignorant. Have you ever seen rats being caught in India? Mm -hmm. How do they catch? The rat trap. The rat trap. Do, do you need to put a bait? Or the rat comes and sits in the trap? No. No, you have to put a bait. Now does the rat know that it's a bait? No. As soon as he opens his mouth to take a bite, he finds himself that the door is closed and he cannot come out. In the same way, God is saying, Satan has his trap and the trap is in your mouth. 
and through this trap he not only destroys you he makes your life extremely miserable yeah read it prop 62 have you been caught by your own words have you been caught by your own words trapped by your own promises trapped by your own promises well then my son okay so here he said have you been trapped by your own words this one right. now let's take for example the doctor gave you a bad report which is which is a fact okay the doctor said you are suffering from cancer let's say how many times will the word cancer ring in your mind all the time all the time, all the time. how many times will you open your mouth and speak about cancer so when a person has opened his mouth accepted the report that is a fact and opened his mouth and spoken that i got cancer has the person spoken against god's word set you free right god when he, when god made you he made you in his image and likeness he made you free from everything right so when we see reports when we see things that um the doctor tell us that this is maybe a fact the moment we proclaim it it becomes a fact like it cements that fact is my thinking of it but isn't it it is a fact yeah can isn't it the report say what is really there mm -hmm. yeah so how does it go against god's word because unless i know god's word then only i know whether it's aligned or going against it now when you look at jesus on the cross the bible says in 1 peter 1:23 that his body was wounded his body was wounded so that your body can be healed. Is that right? Yes. Wrong. It doesn't say in future tense. It says it in past tense. It says by his wounds you were healed. So God speaks everything in the new covenant in past tense and we speak everything in future tense. I know that God will heal me of cancer. Now is are they both the same? God saying by His wounds you are being healed, and I'm saying, Lord, I know that one day you will heal me of cancer. Are they both same? When God says by my by His wounds you are being healed, means cancer has been killed. Whereas you are saying, one day I know I will be healed. So what are you now suffering from cancer? So what's the trap? The trap is. Satan wants to use your five senses and make you speak the things that you can see, hear, feel, touch, smell that contradicts to God's word. So when a person has opened his mouth and spoken, a person speaks what he believes. So if he has believed wrongly, he has spoken wrongly. Can he live a victorious life or a defeated life? A defeated life. So in a day you spoke a thousand words. How many words did you speak? Faith filled words. And how many words did you speak? Fear filled words. Because whatever words you spoke. decides your future if you spoke faith filled words then those faith filled words will remove your mountain if you spoke fear filled words then the hill will become the mountain so who has been given the power to speak we like my brother just said are we created in the likeness and image of god yes 
So are we God? No. But are we like God? Yes. So are we supposed to operate like God? Yes. So when God saw darkness in the Garden of Eden and the earth was void and formless, did he say there is darkness or did he say let there be light? So God speaks faith-filled words in every situation. And when he spoke those faith-filled words, the Spirit of God took those faith-filled words and brought it from spiritual to natural. So is the Holy Spirit with you? Yes. Is he willing to help you? Yes, because he's my helper. Can he help you? No. Why not? Because for the Spirit of God to operate in my life, he needs, according to the system, faith-filled words coming out of my mouth. So if I'm not speaking faith-filled words, but I'm speaking fear-filled words, <coughs> the Holy Spirit who is supposed to help me, can he help me? Because if he helps me, he goes against the system. So now, can the demonic spirits come and destroy me? Surely. Why? Well, that's what you spoke. So words are spiritual things that become natural things. So I spoke a spiritual thing according to 1 Peter 1.23. Lord, I thank you that by your wounds I have been healed. Now did I speak faithful word? Yes. Did I speak in agreement to God's word? Yes. Did I believe my senses or did I believe the word of God? The word of God. Now will that faithful word activate the Holy Spirit to get into action? 100%. So what's my challenge as a Christian? My challenge as a Christian is not to read the Bible, study the Bible, use that Bible as a manual every day of my life, and now the battle is not how much can I get from God. The battle is how much can I teach my mind to agree, believe in what God's Word says. Why do you think Christians live a defeated life even though they go to church every day? They go to church. They say their prayer. They read the Bible every day. But yet, they live by sight and not by faith. A person who lives by faith is saying, I am convicted. I am sure. I am 100% confident that what God has promised me, I have received it. Do you have the evidence to believe? No. I do not have the evidence to see it or believe it. But yet, I choose to believe it because it is written in the word of God. Then it is called as faith. Example, do you believe somebody sitting next to you? You don't have to believe. You can see it. So you'll say, I know that she's sitting next to me. Now, do you believe there is somebody sitting in between you two? You'll say, no, because I can't see, nobody's there. But the Bible says, God has put his ch angels charge over you. Now, can you see the angels? No. But can you believe that there are angels? Yes. Why? Because the written word of God says so. Now, I came to the gate. My brother wanted to open the gate. So he put some number. It did not work. What did he do? He called me. You give him the code number. If his code is right, he doesn't have to beg the gate to open. It will open instantly. Is that right? But if the code is wrong, can you fight with that gate to open? It will be wasting your energy. 
In the same way, the Lord is saying, get the right code from the Bible, open your mouth and speak it out and believe what you are speaking. Now, the miracle is yours. Imagine for a person who my brother brought us here and we are standing outside the gate and he's putting all numbers based on his emotions and feelings. Do you think we will ever enter the gate? So imagine for your battle that you want the victory but your life is governed by your emotions and feelings and not the truth mm -hmm. which comes from the word of God. So if you have not put the number right, can you get out of your situation? So who is in charge of your life? Whom do you blame? The husband. Very good. <laughs> Today my life is messed up. It's all in trouble from the day I met. If that was true, if that was true, then Jesus' life should have been completely messed up and he should have been living a de defeated life because what he went through, no human being can ever imagine to go through. Right? And yet, he won the battle. Why? Because no matter what happened, he did not allow his senses or his emotions to rule over his life, but he allowed his father's will to rule over his life. So every time he opened his mouth, he spoke the father's will and not his own will. He spoke his father's will and not what he, what he felt. He aligned his thoughts, he aligned his words, he aligned his faith to what God would says. So if Jesus had to align to God's word to get victory, what do we need to do? Hallelujah. So when a person is speaking what he's feeling, did he speak God's word or did he speak the words of the enemy? Yeah, whatever emotion, but when he speaks, did he speak the words of Jesus or did he speak the words of the enemy? So, whichever fuel you put, that engine will run. Can you put diesel in a petrol engine? Will the car work? Can you put diesel in a petrol engine? The fuel has to be right. So if you belong to God, whose word you need to input? And which one are we inputting? What would you call the person whose engine is diesel and is putting in petrol? Is he not going to ruin the engine? Isn't it going to be a big expenses? So also in our life, when we do not put God's word, what we put devil's word in our life. Now, is it going to cost you extreme expense? Mm -hmm. Will it bring damage? Will the damage bill be small or extremely big? Are you following or should I close the class? No, no, no. I'm trying to show you, once you understand the application right, then you can live a victorious life. You don't need to beg, you need to believe. Let me give you an example. Supposing you are $10, wife, right? and ask her, sure, you are $10 with you, and a poor man starving for four days, you looked at him and you had compassion for him. And you said, Jesus, for your sake, I will spend this ten dollars on this man. And you spend seven dollars on this man. How many dollars do you have now? Hmm? 
How many dollars will she have? Perhaps a bank. Bank of ten. Husband? Yeah. And the ten dollars. Ten dollars? She spent seven. seven. How many she will have? We'll have two. That was confident. Now, I'll ask Linus what he has to say. Linus, how many will we share? 700. Ah, that's interesting. Why did you say yeah? Because he paid me 100 balls. And huh? And he paid 100 balls. Now, did he believe 100 fold or did he believe 3? <laughs> <laughs> if I looked at my world, it would be 3. Because our life is governed by the world. But when you, your action is, or your opportunity is there, do you take action based on what you learned in the world, or did you take action based on what you heard in the Bible? Let's say you came to church and the, and the priest was teaching on sowing and reaping. And he said, according to Luke 6.38, when you give, it shall be given to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together. Shall men give unto you? You heard the teaching. Now, should you be a giver or a taker? Nobody wants to talk when it comes to money. <laughs> so, are we givers or are we takers? Or are we suckers or sores? What, what do you say? I think. Well, for me, I mean, I'm using me. Um, I'm a you taker. think or you do? I do. I say. So and that's just because of the way we're programmed. And we are programmed that way. Over that, over we are programmed. my lifetime of 40, 41 years, yeah, I'm a taker, and it's really sad to know that. So yeah, yeah. So, so you have been programmed. Who programmed you? The world. Yeah. Now, what Jesus is programming and saying. Can you start giving and I will show you how I will multiply your resources. Now please don't understand, misunderstand me, that I am going to take money from you. <laughs> I am here to share with you the truths that I learned and practicing those truths. I have never had a single day broken in my life. Praise God. Praise God. So most of the time, which sense knowledge do we use? The faith sense or a five sense? So you might be a Christian and a very active member in the church. Does that guarantee your life is going to be a victorious life? No. But do people think like that? But they think, I'm in the choir. That's why I'm qualified to be blessed. I am doing this for God, therefore I'm qualified to do this. And God said, no. What you believe is what you speak. And what you believe and what you speak is what you receive. So what's your challenge every day? To fight against Satan? Yes or no? Yes. No, you don't have to fight Satan. God sent Jesus to fight him. And he fixed him already. So what's your fight? Your fight is against your own thinking. To speak words of victory, speak words of God's promise of, of what's been done in our lives is what the message I'm getting and I hope I'm right is, is speak the right words and you will get the reward because the reward's there for the taking but we don't know the right formula, we've not used the right formula in our lives, which is the word of God. We've not applied it to our situations, and, and that's why we're struggling. And then we wonder why we're struggling as a captive. You say, you go to church, you pray, you fast, you do all these things, but you don't get and to the life is miserable. Exactly, and so... So now you, you have a credit card. Yeah. And in your account, there are, say, one million. And you want 
10,000. Almost to God to yours, but yes, okay. Okay. And you, have, you want to get $10,000, okay? Will you go to the manager and beg him, or will you sign a check? Will you go to the manager and say, give me the money, please, it's my money, or will you sign the document and take what is yours? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You just sign the check because you've got the money, right? So do you need to beg? No. no. In the same way, when you come to God, does he want you to beg or believe what is his system? No, he's son of God. He's he's God. So instead of believing his system, what are we doing? Yeah. I just saw some papayas raw. Did you plant the seed? Yes. When you planted the seed, could you see those big papayas? No. Could you see the leaves? No. Or the tree? All that you saw was the seed. But was there potential in that seed? Now, can that seed multiply into more trees of papayas? Yes. So, in the same way, when you are opening your mouth and speaking words, are those seeds? Yes. So, what kind of seeds are you planting every day? Filled with faith, then your destination is going to be victory. Filled with fear and worry, then your destination is going to be sickness, disease, and death. My mother, she raised 14 children back home in India. Never ever worked, looked after her mother, her father, plus had 14 children. Without her working and only my father, they survived. Because they were happy with the little what they did. No, they were not because of that. Mm. They were not the quitters. 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 Sorry, this morning you came to me. Yes, they were yeah, not quitters. Trained. They were not quitters because they were trained. No matter what happens, what happens to you? you will endure and not leave the engine. You are the engine. Might be the main engine failed. So she takes over even though she is not educated, mm -hmm. but she still believes that she can pull the four, a 14 bogies and reach them to their destination. Whereas now, in those days, it was all about self-giving or selflessness. And in today's world, the world teaches you how much selfish you can be. So the world teaches you take, 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 and God teaches you give, give, give. Now was she a giver or a taker? That's why she never left. Now are you under the law of gravity? Can you see? But can you feel? No. But can you see the effect of it? Do you know we got into the plane and the plane was full 180 passengers with luggage and praise God, our plane flew. <laughs> the law of gravity did not work. Has your car ever flown? No. Don't try it. <laughs> <laughs> How come the plane flies which is more heavier than the car? The design, the engine, what makes the plane fly? Come on. Just a simple question. Yeah, what lifts you? The air. Can you see the air? No. I'm just sitting below this fan and I can feel the breeze. But when I walked in, I said this fan is rotating reverse. It's taking the air up. Is that right? Why was I sure? because it was rotated in, in a wrong direction. And I even stood up and said, come and stand below this fan, you will not feel the breeze. Why? Because I know the system. In the same way, when the plane comes to the runway, what does the pilot do? He accelerates it at a speed of 350 kilometers per hour. 
at that speed, what happens to the air? This fan is just rotating at very low speed. And still I can feel the breeze on my feet. What happens at that speed? At that speed, on the wings, it's like a storm. So has the pilot, when he's flying, depending on his feeling or on the gauges? He's got to push so much. On the gauges. Trust. So also, trust for it so, so also in our life, are we supposed to depend on gauges or feelings? But is our life based on gauges or feelings? Feelings. That's why we destroy our lives. What about the pilot going 30,000 feet above sea level and then he says, I'm so high, so let me shut off the engine. When he shuts off the engine, the gravity starts mm -hmm. working, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, the gravity is all the time working. It is never shut off. But his engines are firing and overcoming gravity. In the same way, the power to pull you down is always there. But when you open your mouth and fire your engine with God's word, you are overcoming the power of destruction and flying on high. Let's take an example. What pain you got? Shoulder pain, back pain, all over. All over. How many times are you saying you got pain? How many times are you talking to yourself that you got pain? I don't tell myself. Just but your body is saying to you. Surely your body is saying to you. Surely your shoulders are saying to you, I'm in so much of pain. So, uh, surely your back is saying to you, I'm in so much of pain. And when these thoughts, let me repeat again, these thoughts, which are spiritual, you can't see them, are talking to you. Or do you talk to them? Do you talk to them or do you keep your mouth shut? You keep your mouth shut. And because you keep your mouth shut, you have not fought back and those thoughts have, re have creeped into your system and now they are controlling you. But when those thoughts talk to you and you open your mouth and you say, listen thoughts, you have no authority over this house because Jesus said in his word, do not fear, only believe. Jesus said in his word, when I lay hands on the sick, they do recover. So here I am, laying my hands on myself and proclaiming I'm completely healed. Now, is the pilot accelerating the, the flight? Is the pilot on the runway? Yeah. How do you know he's on the runway? Because he's speaking faithful words. But what about the pilot who is speaking all the time worry? Is he on the runway? Yeah. But is the flight going at a high speed? No. Extremely slow. Will that flight ever take off? Will it go and crash? Anybody married here? Only you two. Only you two. Yeah. 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 Why are you are telling him? No, no, I'm just saying he's married too. So. But he doesn't know. Praise God. Now we who are married, okay, do we have difference of opinion between our spouse? Okay, so when there is a difference of opinion, which one do you accept? What you are saying, what he is saying, or what the word of God is saying? Let's be honest. <laughs> so do you mean to say all you are saying is right? I'm a widow, so that's the moment. 
So when you are saying yeah. something, did you say something based on God's word or did you based on your senses? Senses. Now what you said and your spouse agreed with you. Do you think your flight will take off, mm -hmm. or will it be a crash? So how many crashes do you have? <laughs> Too many to count. And, uh, and when you have those crashes, then comes the blaming yep. and pointing your finger. Mm -hmm. And Satan is so happy because he's saying, yeah, the husband mistake, and the husband is not mine, yours. Mm. And the fight goes on. Is that right? Very right. So from now on, when you open your mouth, what will you speak? Brother Joe? And if the husband doesn't listen, then? <laughs> the Bible says you have to listen to your husband. The Bible says to be submissive, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. That's what yeah. it has to be done. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> you tell him. I don't. You tell him. You read only the first part. <laughs> the second part is, husbands be ready to <laughs> die for your wife, like Christ <laughs> died <laughs> for the church. Yeah. So ask him, when is he willing to die? <laughs> when is he willing to take the punishment of his wife in his body to set her free? He's saying, when I came this morning, brother, there was so much of peace in my mind. Now you're you're giving me gun with the bullets. <laughs> so when I go back home, <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Is it about who wins? No. Or who, who is at the steering wheel? No. Or is the world on the steering wheel? The world should be on the steering wheel. So did we understand up till here? Yes. So most of the time, every day, are we under the trap? Or are we free? Trap. Even though you are a Christian? Yes. Even though you got Holy Spirit? Oh, yeah. oh, even though you go to church every day, yeah. <laughs> does any of those things qualify you? No. They are meant to help you to change your thinking. But they never qualify you to get the result. What qualifies is your ultimate decision. So is Christian life a bingo game or a table tennis game? A bingo game, two and four, 24, then you look into the ticket, oh, it's not there. Four and two, 42, not there. Is that the game or is it the table tennis game? Table tennis. Now when you see, have you ever played table tennis? Okay. When you first took the racket in your hand, did the ball remain on the table? No. No. But with practice, were you able to win some games? Yes. What about the person you see on TV playing table tennis? Yeah. Professional player? Professional player? <laughs> By me? We can barely see the ball. Yes. But how many hours did they put in to master that game? Mm -hmm. So in the same way, when you become a disciple of Jesus, you are saying, Lord, I want to be a disciple means I want to learn this system. And the more you learn this system and practice, every day you come back, what? Victorious. Mm -hmm. So is there a challenge is there a challenge from now on? God bless me. Or God, the resources that you have given me, teach me how to use it efficiently and practically your way and not my way. So once a person understands this truth, can that person every day of his life live a victorious life? Yes. So is it a luck game? No. If you got a notebook and a pen, and if you don't have, surely you use your mobile for chatting, right? Mm -hmm. So you can use your mobile to chat with God now and start writing on your mobile. Come on, write down. Mm -hmm. Faith-filled words. Faith-filled words will put me over.
faith filled words will put me over fear filled words will defeat me Faithful words will put me over. Fearful words will defeat me. Okay, let's see the trap. Okay, are you ready? See, my job is not to trap you, but show you how the trap is. Okay. Now, the prophet Joel, God spoke to him in chapter three, verse ten. Joel three ten, the Lord said, "Beat your plowshares into swords, and your pruning hooks into spear." Now let the weak say, "I am strong." Now what the Israelites champions in battles? Now they had journeyed through the promised land, and they had never ever seen a tribe or fought a battle. and now comes a problem that the enemy is coming and destroying them all the time so god tells joel the prophet i'll show you a system when you open your mouth and speak what you desire then the holy spirit will bring those desires to pass so what were they saying when a person is weak what does he say should be saying i am strong but you are weak what does he say i'm weak when a person is sick what does he say i'm sick when a person is broken what does he say no so he says what he sees and feels but what is the word of god says let the poor say i'm rich so do you say to yourself according to the word of god that you are a very rich person Or do you go around telling everybody, "Keep me in prayer, I'm broken." Now, when you go around saying to everybody, "Keep me in prayer, I'm broken," you yourself has cursed your future. Praise God. So, are we getting somewhere? Yes. Are we understanding our mistakes? Yes. So that white book that is there, it is. Is it a prayer book? No. It is a book with scriptures and promises that you can pick up, open your mouth, speak it, believe it, and you shall see. It's a formula. It's a formula. Yeah, it's a formula. We just got to apply it to our life. There's one thing that that's in my personal journey that's that's always resonated with me is because when the Lord died, the last thing He says was done. It's done. The price is paid, and we keep. It is finished. Pay. It is finished. I mean, and, but we still struggle in life. I mean, He's saying, "Yeah, I, I won the battle. Why do you guys still struggle?" And, and like He said, media, TV, television, they all tell us, and our own friends, our own thoughts tell us, "Oh, you're broken. You're still suffering. You're still." So from now on, are you going to speak your problem? Or are you going to speak to the problem? Speak to the problem. Are you going to tell everybody, keep me in prayer? I'm going through this problem. Or are you going to tell everybody, I've finished with the problem? Mm-hmm. Now, isn't it that I'm teaching you how to tell lies? Because <laughs> I've seen my niece is Tanya Rosaria, who tell you know her, and right through her illness. I am healed. And she has taught me so much through her illness that she never ever said I'm if I kissed her auntie don't weep for me because I'm healed. That really taught me so much. That she had so much of faith that she never brought her illness now, you know, I've got cancer. 
I'm going to die tomorrow. I'm going to I'm going to leave the city. You just said she got she had a lot of faith. She just believed. So where did she get this faith? Can I go also and get this faith? Is it available in some shop? No, in a shop. It's her strength. In a strength. So how does a person get strength and faith? Believing in God and herself. Praise God. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the more and more you are hearing and hearing by the word, who is coming? Praise God. So am I a farmer who is growing faith or am I a farmer who is destroying faith? Yeah, I'll, I'll take a long. Sabi lang sa Tigre? Yes. 